So now it's a new group of questions, and it starts as if it's a whole different test. However, one thing that you will know with this, the actual subject matter that you covered in part one, you don't see it in part two. So for example, if they covered probability and statistics in part one, you don't see much of that in part two. So they're pretty good at keeping the topics within the two parts. And that's a good thing to consider when you take the break as you're eating your snack or your lunch, that you think about the parts that, that they actually cover. Now you should be very familiar with all the parts of the test before you even walk in there. So you should be able to know what types of questions are in each part. And just try to keep track of it. Once you finish the test, the results are available within two weeks. Now I say two weeks even though mine came out in five days because you never know what might slow down the results. I took mine the Saturday before Christmas and Christmas I think was on a, a Monday that week and so there was a lot going on I think at NCES. Just quickly with the PE exam just to show you what, what the difference is as of again 2019 there are 24 different PE examinations being administered. Some particular large categories like civil engineering has five, mechanical engineering has three, electrical engineering has three, amongst which one of those three is the computer engineering one that I took. And there are others that the topics like nuclear engineering, there's only one of those. When you get into environmental engineering, there's only one of those, for example. But altogether, 24 different ones. There are some of those tests that are online and they're making the transition they have a schedule on the NCES website to show you the transition from going from paper-based over to computer-based testing as of this date today the electrical engineering ones are not I didn't see any of the civil engineering ones either or mechanical ones so the, the key most popular tests are not yet converted over. Chemical engineering is computer-based, and I believe nuclear engineering as well. Even though it's computer-based, though, it is the same test, and you follow the same rules. You have a total of in the PE of only 80 questions. They are split between the multiple choice, and if it's a computer-based test, it also has the graphical selection questions. You don't have the A, B, C, D. You have to actually move things around on the screen with the mouse to select the right answer. Sometimes there's multiple questions answered with one graphical representation. The test time is also different. You now have a full eight hours or 480 minutes of total test time. It's also divided into two parts and they have a full lunch break between the two parts. It's the same thing as the FE. The two parts are completely separate. They actually give you a whole new booklet if it's a paper base and I'm sure that the uh, computer-based ones, which, you know, but the computer-based ones work the same as with the FE. They start a whole new section of test questions. One thing that I did not notice with that one, I saw the same topic split pretty evenly between the morning and afternoon session. Now this one, it'll change depending on whether it's an online-based test or it's a paper, how long you have to wait for the test results. I understand that the computer-based one takes three to six weeks Sounds like a lot, but that's nowhere near what I had to wait, which was six to eight weeks for the paper-based results. I mean, you talk about a wait, it's, it drives you completely nuts. I guarantee you, when you get down to that five, six, seven, seventh week, you're not, and I'll show you a website later that uh, a lot of people in the same boat, because you take the same test pretty much at the same time. Most of the tests are not offered for PE, and I don't know if they ever will, are not offered on a continuous basis you know whenever you can find an available center you have to take those tests April or October those are the only two offering times from NCES if you miss one you're waiting six months for the next one and then unfortunately some tests the rare ones the ones that don't get a lot of people sitting for those tests they're only offered once a year either in April or in October but no other time so be aware of those. Now I'm going to talk about the examination test center equipment. A lot of important points here. First off, you should go to the Pearson View Center website, which I have the link up on the, on the site here, or you could just do a Google for it. There is an actual YouTube video, and I think it was originally created by NCEES. I think that's what the copyright said, that shows you what you're going to have to go through 
when you get to the center. And it's all really about the ins and outs and security rules that you're going to have to follow. Geometric scanning they do. I think, I'm not sure if it actually takes a picture of your veins or not. Big bright light does come on so possibly. I suggest you watch that video. It's on YouTube. It's not long. It's only about four or five minutes. And you'll be able to see those preparation things you, you need to be aware of. Making you, you know, pull your pockets out. In my case, they also made me roll my sleeves up and pull up with the cuffs of my pants. Go visit the test center a few days prior to your scheduled test. Now, I wouldn't do it too early because sometimes they might change the interior or they might change, as I mentioned in a minute, the combination code to the restroom. So make sure you go there maybe for a week early. And when you get there, let them know that you have a scheduled test. And this is a dry run test center visit. And sometimes they'll give you some helpful information. Now, I not only took the FE exam at that same test center, but when I was going for my MBA, I also took the GMAT exam there. A totally different configuration for the GMAT, though. It looks the same, but you have different rules applied to it. You have a separate rule sheet for each type of test that people are taking in the same room taking different tests. So right next to me could have been somebody taking a GMAT on one side. Over to the right, somebody could have been taking the PE exam, one of the computer-based ones, like chemical engineering. I wouldn't have known that. So you see people allowed bringing different things into the test room as a result. When you go there to visit, they won't let you too close to the actual test room. You'll see it. It's glass windows. You'll see people in there taking a test, but they won't let you get too close to it. But look around. Get yourself familiar with the inside of that room. Where are the waiting seats? There's usually a few rows of seats right there in the middle of the waiting room. And you're going to be sitting there for a while. When you first get there, listening to their instructions, and then, of course, when they call you up one by one to verify your credentials. They give you the sheet also at that point of the specific rules you have to follow for your test, things you can and cannot bring in and so forth. Important here, look around. And in my room, it was the back of the entrance door. Find the code to open the restrooms if the restrooms are not in that room. And uh, I heard that that's usually not the case. They don't have restrooms inside the Pearson facility. They're out in the hallway of the building you're in and they usually have a code that locks them, the, the actual doors. They won't let you use cameras so you'll have to commit the code to memory. You want to be a hero too? Try to memorize the code for the, for the opposite gender restroom as well. Just a suggestion. Look around the building that it's in. It's usually in some office building or some other larger building and find out where you can go to eat your snack they generally won't let you eat the snack inside the waiting room. I was able to find it. It was actually, there's a terrazzo in the middle of this office building. And down at the bottom center was some tables, cafeteria style table. There wasn't even vending machines. I was able to find a table and I brought my lunch. I had put it in my locker and then I was able to eat, eat my lunch down there and, and calm down, think about the test in the morning and then get ready for the, for the test in the afternoon what you must bring. Now, this is my view of it. Government issued ID with a picture. Don't show up with, I don't know, if, I think some states might still give you certain IDs without a picture. Uh, they will probably cause you some issues. So I'll try to see if you can get one. Passports always work. Driver's license should work most of the time, unless there's a couple of oddball states out there. An approved calculator and a backup. And I suggest one of the top two is the TI-36. And I took the top one there, and I love that particular calculator. I think I have it over here somewhere. This is the TI-36X Pro. And that's a, the that's a calculator I use for the test. There is also available top-of-the-line Casio. The Casio one is the most popular, I say, from the people that I know that were studying for it. And I went and got that as well. So I have that one too. They don't cost much, about $20 US each if you go to Walmart or Amazon. You get better deals than that depending on the sales like right before school starts. I wound up buying both. I spent a lot of time with the Casio and I spent a lot of time with the TI and I ultimately settled on the TI. I liked the buttons better. I liked the way it felt 
and some of the features that it had. There are some advanced features on the Casio that the TI does not have, but I wound up not using any of them. They might have, it might have been better off for some other tests, but you know, not for the FE exam. Whichever one you pick, stick with it. Don't go and switch back and forth. That was a mistake I made. Go ahead, do all of your problems with that calculator handy. If you decide to go online and find other videos besides mine, especially the Casio one, a lot of videos out on YouTube, feel free. But whatever one you pick, I suggest you stick with it. And when you go to the test, bring two of whatever it is. You leave one in your locker and you bring the other one into the test. And if that one were to die on you, and it could happen, there is a battery in them. Uh, there's also It also uses the room light, which is plenty of it in the test center to support the calculator power. But you never know. You could wind up in a dark corner or something, and your battery that's inside of it may be weak. Don't use an old calculator. Buy, buy a brand new fresh one. Changing the batteries on those things is not trivial. Comfortable and easy to remove shoes. Make sure you bring clothing that will deal with temperatures that are different than outside. So for example, I took mine in December. It was somewhat cold. I was dressed appropriately, but I saw a lot of people, I could see them shuffling around in their seats because inside that room, it got hot. And so if people had a sweater or something they could take off, that helped them cool down as a result of it. Just keep that in mind. You may have to adjust to deal with temperature variations between what they provide in the room versus what's outside. Bring some non-electric hearing protection, either earmuffs, and they will check to make sure they're not electric, or earplugs. I had a guy that was sitting those little test cubicles away from me. I was coughing up a lung. Obviously, it distracted me. And I had brought earmuffs, but they were not comfortable earmuffs. I made a big mistake on those earmuffs, so I tried using them for a while, and then it, the, the strap started hurting the side of my head, and I took them off. Just the sheer amount of time you're sitting there, you need extremely comfortable ones. Also, as I said earlier, bring a snack or lunch with a drink. Get your energy level back up again. You're going to need it for the second part of the test. This is a marathon test. Not as bad as the PE, but pretty bad. And bring a package of tissues. However, make sure that uh, you sh show them to the proctor and that they clear them. And they may actually take them and try to crunch them up. It's a little bendable package just to make sure you haven't hidden anything in there. A recording device or a camera or something. So be aware they're watching. They have cameras on each individual at all times. What you should not bring. No electronic devices. Absolutely not. Do not bring in, I don't, it didn't even bring it into the room, it didn't even go in my locker. A cell phone or smartphone. Leave those in your car or home if you took public transportation. Do not bring those with you. And that includes things like, obviously, the phones, but watches, no radios, no cameras, hearing aids. I saw somebody having trouble with the hearing aid because it wasn't a subscription hearing aid. They had a hearing aid that they bought themselves to make it easier to hear things, and they did not get in with that. Just be aware. Could put those things in your locker, but I wouldn't take the chance that I accidentally have it in my pocket, believe me. And you can't bring any food or drink into the testing room. Those get left in the locker. The test center computer. I have not seen much information on this. I wish I had, because that was one of the biggest things I had to be aware of. They advertised a 20-inch widescreen but I found the actual document online where the actual builder of the test center is allowed to provide something as small as 17 inches. Believe me, the real estate, even with 20 inches, is used up very quickly. You have two different things running on the computer in front of you. On the left-hand side is your, your FE handbook in PDF form. And on the right-hand side, you actually have the test question area. It causes a problem. You may have trouble seeing. I had trouble seeing some of the finer print in the handbook. And as you do a search through it, the search is very poor. I found a product they use, OGAF Standard PDF Viewer. It is not Adobe. You do a Control F to search for a word, it will do the search, but it won't jump to the word like Adobe will. It'll sort of like a, uh, a table of contents of links on the left-hand side of the screen. Uh, with the with the document and it reduces the size of the page 
of your PDF when it does that and you have to click on every single link in order to find out what it was and you know how it works if you've done searches through Adobe sometimes you got nonsense matches fractions of a word that matched or a phrase even and you have to click through that the time that you waste doing that is enormous so just be ready for that I didn't try downloading that TOGAF PDF there is a, a free version of it out there if you can practice with that I suggest you do because I practice with the Adobe and searching and keeping the screen the right size was great compared to this thing now general conduct and courtesy do not talk with any other test takers inside that test room matter of fact it's probably even best not to talk too much outside the test room if you are forced to take the test with a cold I would say the best thing to do is bring one of those masks bring yourself one of those medical masks just as a courtesy to the others there so that if they happen to turn when you do a big cough and they see the mask on you it won't be as distracting inform the proctors of your condition obviously and make sure that they don't want to do something special about it they might want to put you off all the way to the side by yourself where there's no other people sitting but I think the room can hold like 20 people make sure that if you have any problems at all after being seated raise your hand immediately do not ask anybody near you do not spend too much time messing with your computer Do not uh, look through your stuff too much that you might have been allowed to bring in there raise your hand and have them come over so that they can see you're not up to something funny okay let's see how you do it a little exercise and quiz I'll present you with five questions and they'll be based upon the critical points covered in this lesson get a pad and pencil or open a window on your PC that you can type in get your smartphone with the stopwatch function or use a regular stopwatch. Click on this video screen to stop it while you get everything ready then click on it again to get the video to start again. Timer will start on the screen for you in a few seconds and then the quiz will start. Are you ready? Question number one. Does every state require that your experience be signed off by a professional engineer or PE? Question number two. How many minutes on average do you have to answer each question on the computer-based FE examination? Pick the closest answer. Question number three. Which organization provides a primary source of information indicating that you can sit for the FE test without experience after graduating college? Question number four. Which state does not provide automatic PE reciprocity to residents of every other state? Question number five. Which of these items will most likely be disallowed within the Pearson View test room? That does it. Once you have finished answering all the questions, stop your stopwatch. Record the time you took reading, listening, and answering all the questions. The answers to this quiz, along with the timing goal, and any calculations needed, will be provided at the start of the next video. Good luck. This is the end of this video. In the next video, I will be talking about the online test experience. I talked about a little bit here, but not the meat of it. With that, I hope you find this video helpful in preparing for the FE exam. If you agree, do me a favor. Do a subscription to my channel. Hit the little subscribe button underneath this video. If you want to get the notice automatically sent to your email, then also hit the little bell that's there. You have to do usually two separate operations. Then when I put my next section up, you will get the email saying that it's available for you to look at. Thanks for watching, and I wish you luck on the test.